Today, I'm like a kid in a candy store. Why? Because I've had over the last week the privilege of driving a car that makes me feel alive, makes me feel silly when being in it and makes me realize why I love cars. I've even dressed in the official outfit of people who own this type of car, which is a K-Way jacket, chinos or a cargo pants and, and sneakers. Yeah, you've got to look the part, right? Welcome to another edition of Tyrone Paulson Drives and the Suzuki Jimny 5-door GLX. Yes, this is the car that has made me so excited and yes, it's a Jimny, but it's a Jimny and now it's even bigger and even more Nunus. I mean, I reviewed the 3-door version previously and I loved it and this one, well, I love even more, so review done. But sadly, that's not how reviews work. So, let me tell you what's different. Five-door Germany is the same width and height as the three-door version, but it's now 340 millimeters longer, which is about so much. I mean, or so much, Ach, I don't know. But. It is also now slightly heavier from 1,050 kilograms to 1,200 kilograms. The extra length has also decreased the approach angle from 37 to 36 degrees and the departure angle from 49 to 47 degrees. But it still has that same 210 millimeters of ground clearance. And did I mention that it now has two extra doors and more space on the inside? Well, kinda. it still has that same Nunu's Germany looks. And it also still makes use of that same K15B 1.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder petrol engine. It produces 75 kilowatts and 138 Newton meters with both a four speed auto and five speed manual available, which is what is available in this car right here. Furthermore, it still makes use of Suzuki's renowned all grip four x four drivetrain that offers two wheel as well as four x four high range and four wheel drive low range. It still has also, hill descent and hill hold control, ABS brakes, and it still features that renowned high rigidity ladder frame sashi and steering dampers for improved on-road performance. This GLX version also gets new things like LED headlights, rear parking sensors, a camera system, and it now has a boot which is bigger. Basically, it's the same Jimny, just a little bit more of it. On the inside, it again still feels and looks the same, with the GLX version getting a now larger 9-inch infotainment display with both wired and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The driver display here in the front is still analog, even though it's got a little bit of a digital screen in there, but it really works, man. It's, it's small, but really good. It gives you enough of the info that you require. And it still has that rugged, you know, hard, grippy, refreshing kind of feel of the interior compared to a lot of that more smooth, minimalist look that is being taken up by many other manufacturers this still feels old school and and liquor man there's only rake adjustment on the steering wheel and then there are buttons on the steering wheel for volume phone the little driver info display and cruise control there's there's nothing fancy nothing over the top nothing flashy there's only two cup holders here in the center and a single usb a port and a 12 volt socket in the front uh, yes, there's not much storage space in here, meaning that I can't really put my large cell phone down here, but, but that's okay because now it just stays in my pocket and I won't be fiddling around with it at all. Now in the rear is where things get a little different. Firstly, I can now actually in here. I mean, once you hit over 40, trying to get into any car that's got two doors is an issue. 
But in here, it's great. Why? Because it's got four doors now. The seats are all, well, a bit upright but but it's not awkward it's okay once you extend the headrest you kind of sit comfortable and even for somebody like me who's only 1.7 ish you know what i mean i'm fine back here taller people might find it a bit difficult but if you maybe just open your legs a bit wider then you should be okay plus plus listen you should feel privileged if you get to sit right here in the back in a germany so don't complain okay you can get um car seats in here the doors are a bit narrow but you can get because there are iso fix points in here and kids will be happy because they can wind the windows all the way down honestly this is all that i ever wanted in a germany and obviously more space in the boot which is now increased from 85 to 211 liters. And if you put the seeds down, that figure grows to 322 liters. Now I know that the Jimny has always been a three door, but this whole configuration and setup just works for me. At least now I can load my DJ bags in here when I need to go to a gig. Getting behind the wheel of the uh, Germany five door feels exactly well, the same as the three door version. But somehow it just feels a little bit more stable, a bit more comp composed maybe. Even though it looks the same out the front and it feels the same here in the front, it just somehow that extra bit of length just, well, added something a little bit different to it. I don't know what it is, but it works. Yes, you still have to, when driving this car, think of what's coming up because the steering feel still feels a little bit vague, got quite a bit of play in here. And then you also have to think about things like, for example, the wind, because it's very windy in Cape Town today, and things like your overtaking and all of that. You have to consider all of those things all the time. Yes, this 1.5 litre engine is quite nice, but I do think it deserves a, it should have had a turbocharged engine, you know. I mean, it, it's made it to this five-speed gearbox. It works really, really well. It's a lot better than the four-speed. And when you do rev it out a little and push it, you know, you it becomes quite spirited, if you know what I mean. But nothing that you can, like, you know, write home about. Um, I took this car, for example, up Tigerberg Hill in the northern suburb, which is a hill that kills trucks. And I managed to keep a constant speed of 100 kilometers an hour without shifting gear. And as I went past all those big monsters with their big engines that got stuck there, this, this, little, this little monster just kept on chugging on. Average fuel consumption claimed by Suzuki is 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers, but I have been staying keeping his cars at an average 7.6 liters. So it's not really that bad. The extra length, even though it's good and gives you extra space, does have some of its own little drawbacks. And one of that is when it comes to like, parking because the turning circle is now increased to about 11 meters and that's kind of hectic for this car and i've had quite a bit of embarrassing situation and moments when trying to reverse park this car but after a while again you get used to it but it's got stuff like parking sensors uh rear view camera and all of that but um yeah you know the, oh yeah the rear view camera it points down a little bit too low so that's a bit awkward and you do also feel quite a bit of that body roll, especially because of that. Well, you know, it's tall body and then it's the tiny little wheels. But honestly, when you, when you go off-roading, then, wow, it's just really the car comes alive. Shifting from, from two-wheel drive to four high still feels old school because you do it with that lever. Uh, but I think that's what that whole appeal is, man. It's just old school leckiness. Oh, and... My entire off-roading experience with this car has been every single piece of sandy patch and gravel road or something that I could just find. I would just take this car on this little offbeat little adventures. I mean, it's not even real adventures, but I mean, this is what the car makes you feel. It's that every, every single place, like right now, just a little, little gravel patch just becomes an adventure. It's... Uh, yeah, that's really what this is. It, it's an adventure, memory, fun, little creation. It just works. And I love it, man. I love this car. Damn. <laughs> Old school, analog. 
Het werkt man, het werkt. Het is lachen, lachen. <laughs> Woe, here we go again. As a motoring journalist, I'm expected to tell you about cars and why they're good and, well, value for money. Which is why I can't really recommend this car. I mean, it's not cheap at all. The entry-level five-door Germany is 429,900 Rand. This GLX manual is 457,900 Rand. And the auto is 22,000 Rand more. I mean, you could buy a Polo Vivo GT for at least 100,000 Rand less. And if you go to the Suzuki website right now, you'll probably find a, well, a better car than this on there. But with all of that said, I guarantee you, you won't find a better car than this. I know that sounds very confusing, but you see this car for me represents what the old Beetle was. It was that car that was simple, it was basic, but gave you that feeling of freedom. You know, that conquering, fun, I love life kind of spirit. And I find that in this car. It's refreshing, it's simple, it's not over complicated. And it's an adventure starter. It's quirky and again, it's Nunus. And on top of that, it will embarrass a lot more expensive SUVs and off-roaders out there. It's that car that nobody can really recommend. It, it's just that car that you like because you do. It's that car that I say that if you want it, you should definitely go out and get it. Thanks for watching another edition of Tyrone Paulson Drives. Please give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so today now or whenever you can now all that i have to do is to well figure out how i'm going to tell suzuki south africa that they're not getting their car back thanks for watching see you on the next one